All right, well, for those of you that have hopped on Facebook with us, welcome. This is our last 1K webinar of the year. Um, we try to do these uh, live webinars and Q&A to help you connect with the uh, programs and the people running in the backgrounds of your lives and especially your um, elected and appointed officials. We have a very special guest with us, of course, today, our city manager, Dr. Kenneth Haskin. Um, Dr. Kenneth Haskin became our city manager this summer, bringing with him over 25 years of city government experience. He has a master's in public administration from Webster University, and he's credentialed by ICMA, the International City County Management Association. Uh, before serving in municipal government positions, he served as the chief of staff for Pulaski County Circuit Court, a program director for Boys and Girls Club, and the case manager for Family Service Agency. In city government, he has a reputation for job creation, financial discipline, and public-private partnerships. Visit cityofcape.org management to learn more about Kenny's impressive background. And we have him with us today, Dr. Haskin. We're glad that you are leading um, our city and this webinar. Sir, welcome. Well, Nicolette, it's just so great to be with uh, you this, this evening and your viewers uh, for One Cape. Uh, this is an exciting time for the city of Cape. Uh, we have some great, great programs that we feel like will do one thing and that's improve the lives of the citizens in this community. And that's why I decided that this was a place for me. Um, but first I'd like to you know, give a shout out to all of those citizens and who voted uh, in favor of the use tax. Uh, when I started assessing this city, you know, before I took the job, uh, I noticed that there were some deficiencies in our financials and uh, the, our ability to truly provide quality services. And in doing so, uh, I noticed that our police and fire uh, were delinquent in terms of uh, the amount of staff that they needed. Uh, public works was very, very um, you know, hampered by the fact that it was a struggle to try to get as many people on board. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that our salaries were not where they needed to be in comparison to a lot of our competition in this region. Uh, so I couldn't be more grateful for the citizens and the response that they uh, gave us uh, in that vote of confidence uh, a couple of weeks ago when they endorsed the use tax. Again, as more retail activity shifts online, Passing the internet sales tax will positively impact the quality of life by allowing the city to maintain essential services. And those services, as I said before, include police and fire, uh, street maintenance and parks, uh, cemetery maintenance, trash uh, and nuisance abatement, and of course, sidewalk uh, and street lighting. I mean, those are just a few things uh, that I know that these dollars will be used for in terms of attracting quality, and again, I say quality, uh, employees to this city, because guess what? This city and the constituents that live here certainly deserve it. I wanna talk a little bit this evening uh, about um, my style of governance and, and what I represent and my leadership style, and more importantly, my core values and, and what I truly represent. Uh, my leadership style, uh, I would argue, is, is a visionary. Uh, I truly believe that if you have a mission in life, if you have a vision, uh, then you need to, to have one that encompasses the entire community, not just a few. My management style is more of a democratic style with a focus on process, process management, operations, personnel development, consensus building, and of course, motivation. Building a trust account, and I refer to it as a trust account, um, is something that, uh, that I've been working on over the past 25 years in my career. And essentially what that means to me is that um, whenever I'm out visiting with the public or whenever I'm engaging staff, uh, my job, number one, is to tell people the truth. Because I truly believe over time, once you start building that, what I refer to as a trust account with staff, citizens, uh, developers, and alike, uh, then people will respond uh, in kind. So uh, whether the information is good, bad, or indifferent, people want to know the truth. Uh, and I know uh, the government over the years have been basically attacked for not uh, being transparent and, and, and being truthful with people. 
in this country, but I assure you the citizens here should be proud of the work that the mayor and the council have been doing over the years here uh, to set a standard, to set a goal, uh, to basically tell people the truth and truly be honest about uh, the business that we engage in, which is basically city government. And again, that's one of the things that attracted me to this city. A, the citizens, the acceptance, the welcome that I received when I came down for my visit, but more importantly, uh, my personal engagement with staff, uh, the mayor and the council made me feel so welcome that I truly knew that Cape was the place for me. I wanna talk about my recipe and it's basically a recipe for success. My recipe for success is communication plus respect equals trust. And again, I go back to that trust account because I know just how critical that is in getting things done, big things done, big ideas, um, having a big vision, having a big goal for this community is what I represent and I intend on following through on. My core values, collaboration, consensus builder. That's what I represent. When you think of Kenny Haskin, I want you to think of a guy who is a collaborator, a consensus builder, and a guy who truly wants to be open and transparent with everything we do. A visionary leader. There's no question about it. My entire career uh, is established on that principle of being a visionary, thinking about what the future holds for the communities that I represent, being ethical. There's no doubt about it. Again, it go, goes back to telling the people the truth, being transparent, being honest, and making sure that we follow through on the things that we promised. Problem solver. In government these days, uh, we notice, especially on Capitol Hill, a lot of infighting uh, on both sides of the aisle. But what you will see here in this city is a person who likes to bring people together. Again, consensus building, problem solving. Let's make sure that we get in together, work hard to try to come up with the best solution for the entire city. Communication, being able to communicate effectively, um, being again, open, being accessible um, is also something I think is critically important to that goal of communicating. Fundamentals of good government. Folks, that, that is clearly the hallmark of what makes uh, a city thrive and a city be successful. You have to develop those fundamentals of good government. If someone calls City Hall, we answer the phone. If someone asks for something, we respond and respond in a timely fashion. And these are, again, you would think are very, very elementary, but I've noticed uh, a lot of cities in this country have failed at those simple, and we would call it simple fundamentals of governance. Ability to execute. If you tell someone you're gonna do something, do it. Don't just make things up. I'm not about that. That's not what I represent. Uh, my reputation in this business doesn't support that. And I, and I assure you that the staff here, along with the mayor and the council, are focused on one thing, and that's making sure that we uh, say what we're going to say, follow through on it, and certainly more importantly, execute. There are some intangibles that I'd like to talk about that I think are really, really important in city government. Intangibles. These are things that I think that are important for people uh, like myself that are in this business need to have in order to be successful. I believe you have to have the temperament, good temperament, temperament to be able to respond to the public, be able to respond to uh, staff in a way that um, is not aggressive in a way that actually supports the idea that government is going to work uh, with you, not against you. The ability to take direction. We all are accountable to someone or some people. So we have to be open to that. 
again, it's all about making sure that we provide the best quality of services that this city requires and demands. How do you respond to adversity? You know, that, that's one of the, 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 the challenges that I think we all face. Uh, whenever we face adversity, how do we respond? Do we respond negatively? Do we respond positively? Do we respond in a way that meets um, the adversity that, that we're faced with? You have to have the discernment and the mindset and be open to criticism. At the same time, you want to make sure that when you face adversity, that re you respond with a steady hand and a common sense approach. Customer service is just all but important in any business. Again, it goes back to that fundamental that I talked about of good governments. Do you work well with others? I think that is something, again, that's fundamental. We have to be able to work together to build a consensus to make sure that we get things done for the citizens. Citizen response. How do we respond? Do we respond in a way that takes forever to respond to a citizen's request for action? Or do we take bold steps to build um, a response that we all know that is required? Because again, that's what the citizens in this community deserve. I want to touch on one other thing. And I think this is something that's really, really important to know. And, and this is something that I believe that we're going to be working hard on here in this city. And this theme about what constitutes good governance. You know, I talked to you a little bit about my value system and, and what I represent personally. But I want to talk to you generally about governance. I truly believe that you have to have a clear message. And you say, well, what is your message? Dr. Haskin, my message to you is one of hope, optimism, and of course, a vision for the future. And you said that vision is going to be developed by staff, the mayor, council, and more importantly, the citizens of the Cape. It can't be Kenny's vision. It cannot be my idea alone. Yes, I'm a big part of that, and I truly feel like uh, that I can bring people together. But more importantly, I cannot take the position that it's either my idea or bust. That, in my opinion, is a recipe for failure. I truly believe that the mayor and the council uh, have set this city in the right direction. And I want to be one piece of that entire pie in terms of making sure that we provide quality services to our citizens. I want to get back to those governance and what constitute good governance. I think there are eight major characteristics. One is, as I talked about before, consensus building, accountability, transparency, being responsive, um, excellent customer service, effective and efficiency. Sure it is. When we start talking about, you know, budget and how we budget, when we're talking about taxpayer dollars, we have to be efficient. We have to make sure that the priorities that we have lined up represent the interest of the mayor, the council, and more importantly, the community, period. Not my interest, but the interest of the people that we serve. Folks, we have to follow the rule of law. That's real clear. Again, it's about making sure that we're fiduciarily sound, we're following the law, and being transparent. In my opinion, we have to have a strategic vision. Again, it's all about making sure that you have a mission in life, you have a vision, and you have to have steps lined out, supported by the mayor and the council in order to get from point A to point B. It just makes sense. 
I want to touch on one other aspect, which I think is the heartbeat and the backbone of a community, and that's economic development. As mentioned earlier, yes, I have a tremendous background in growth and development. But over the years, development has transitioned. And over the past five years, we've seen it shift from the word economic development to economic vitality. And this is my approach to the city of Cape when it comes to development, or as I said earlier, economic vitality. Economic vitality in the city of Cape is a public private collaboration to promote a healthy economy that supports the outstanding quality of life enjoyed by the residents here, period. Again, I'll say it one more time. Economic vitality in the city of Cape is a public private collaboration to promote a healthy economy that supports the outstanding quality of life by its residents. Look, folks, no city can go at it alone when it comes to development and growth. We need our investors. We need our developers working together with us to make sure that we continue to enhance and build the quality of life in this city, period. CAPE, in my opinion, is following a substantial path to economic development, adopting strategies that foster innovation, competitiveness, and entrepreneurship, and maintaining a positive, positive business climate while enhancing community character and preserving the environmental quality. Simple as that. Again, it's a new model uh, over the past five years, as I mentioned earlier, that we are evolving in terms of looking at economic development from a holistic standpoint, rather just development in general. Folks, I think over the years, things have changed. I believe we're headed in a direction that I believe will um, provide the citizens with CAPE um, more and more quality in terms of the services. I believe, again, in reference to the use tax, I think we're going to be able to bring in more quality people uh, to service you, because guess what? At the end of the day, you deserve it. You voted for this, and we intend on following through with it. And again, I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart um, to make sure that um, we follow through on the promises that we made. We're looking forward to laying out our, our financial vision for the future when it comes to uh, our, our staff. And uh, that, again, uh, will be something that I'm very, very optimistic about. Again, I would just like to say before closing that this is all about making sure that we provide quality services to you, the citizens of Cape. You have to have a vision. You have to have a mission in life, in my opinion. Leadership is not easy. It comes with a lot of adversity, it comes with a lot of challenges. But if you provide accountability, transparency, be responsive, communicate, and have that strategic vision, I'm confident that we certainly will get there. Folks, um, thank you. I'm, I'm going to open it up for a few questions. I just wanted you to have that quick message for this evening. And thank you for that, Kenny. That was outstanding. I'm, I'm, as an employee, of course, I'm pretty excited about it too. <laughs> and I love your, your remarks about working with your key staff, your yes. council and the citizenry to help craft and, and constantly refine that strategic vision. Um, and that was actually kind of related to one of our first questions tonight. How do you recommend citizens get involved, get engaged, um, put some deposits in that trust account, if you will, um, hey, with management and council. I love it. Um, you know, I think one thing's for sure uh, is that we have to make sure that, you know, the citizens provided us with the vote of confidence a couple of weeks ago when they endorsed the use tax. And one of the key challenges, or I wouldn't say it's a challenge, uh, for some cities and some states, it may be a challenge. But for us, I believe it's going to be easy. Because we told the citizens that if you vote for this, this is what we intend on doing with those resources. And I am excited about the fact uh, that we are now getting close to 
unveiling uh, that financial plan moving forward. So I believe adding to that trust account, when you tell people you're going to do something, do it. Simple as that. Follow through. Don't wait six months. Don't wait a year. Follow through on it. The citizens endorsed this use tax two weeks ago, and we intend on following through with that promise that we made in de early December. So you'll see a plan that we feel like it's bold, it's ambitious, but it's doable, and it makes sense. That's really great. Thank you. Well, I'll just put out one last call for any additional questions on Facebook or Zoom. If you're, watch, if you're not watching with us live, if you're watching this recorded, just visit our website. Um, you can connect with Dr. Haskin at cityofcape.org slash management. We also publish all of our uh, council members' contact information at cityofcape.org slash council. You can call them, email them. You can use a web form. We try to make it as easy as possible for folks to connect with their public officials. Um, so do use those resources and you can call anytime at 573-339-6320. As Dr. Haskin noted, when you call City Hall, we do actually answer the phone and yes. we'd be happy to take those calls. Um, so I'm just checking here to see if we've got any other questions on Zoom or Facebook, and I'm not seeing any others popped up. So Dr. Haskin, I just wanted to say thank you again for being with us tonight. We appreciate you being here. Well, uh, again, it was a pleasure uh, visiting with, with the viewers on One Cape, and I anticipate coming back sometime soon uh, once we outline our financial plan and, again, our additional steps uh, to accomplishing our vision for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haskin. Have a good night.